welcome and today as i said on twitter i want to make uh, a to-do application right but not in a mac application or ios application so we're not going to be using swift ui we're not going to be using ui kit we're not going to be using anything about the graphical interface what we're going to be using is the terminal and that's it so for a while for a long time i wanted to explore this technology that is behind all the terminals and that was very common you know like many years ago where you can do very fancy things with terminals treat them basically like a, a screens where each each basically square where you type a character it's a pixel and you can draw there like basically characters and, and everything uh, you want so that's something I've always wanted to look at, but I never had the chance or I never really knew what to look for. And recently I've been watching uh, a bunch of videos from some developer. Let's see if I can find it because I, you know, uh, I really like the guy and I think I want to share it with you. So, you know, if you're interested in these things, you should definitely uh, watch it. Let's see if I can find it. There you go. So it's basically this video, yeah. Let's see if, if YouTube wants to, to behave. So here it is. So this is basically the channel I've been, like seriously recently since I found it, I've been like <laughs> binge watching everything this guy does. Cause I don't know, like I find it very interesting. It's, it's kind of like this, a similar approach that I, I like to take with programming where you just do it, you know, for fun and, and th stuff like that. So that's really what I want to take a look at. Uh, so yeah, we're basically gonna try to do, uh, I don't know if there is some screenshot. Da, da, da. Hmm. I'm trying to find an example, but I guess it does it so fast. But yeah, anyway, so we're gonna try to do a kind of like to-do application. Hey, Pierre, what are you spamming on the chat already? This guy. Lazy git. Yes. Exactly. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Like, wait. Pierre is being useful on the chat. That's that's new. So, yeah, kind of this. Of course, not that advanced. But, I mean, you could do everything. Uh, you know, that, it's the same way it's implemented, basically. But I just want to, of course try to learn the basics and for now we're gonna just make a to-do application that uh, you know that displays the to-dos and the don'ts here and that's pretty much it right so to start let's make a directory we're gonna call it what uh, to do I don't know s to do because why not from Swift S to do and here we do Swift package in it. Uh, I guess we need to type executable, right? And if we do Swift run uh, S to do, it's trying to compile and hello world, perfect. And now if we do a chat, as I call it, we basically have Xcode here with everything we need. So I probably am gonna put this around here making sure it doesn't go you know behind that and let's try to save this so in theory we have a main file here yes um, and a package file so things that we need uh, first I want to clean this up because I hate it so much so the first thing we need it's uh, I want to put a pack a couple of packages already which they are not absolutely needed yet but I know that I will need them later so I forgot let me copy paste them from another project already uh, so here I have yeah uh, where it goes here Boop. so the first one is of course uh, Swift parsing from point free uh, like one of the recent versions they just released which that supports with for uh, result builders so it, it, they use like a, the new kind of like Swift UI like syntax uh, so that's what I want to be using because eventually I want to read from a file and parse a file with the to-dos and write it back basically to, to keep it persistent. And for that 
eventually, like we're not going to be using it now, but eventually we're going to also need the argument parser to basically, you know, pass an argument through, like, through the command line. So it's going to probably, you know, we're going to probably have uh, probably, I don't know, examples md or something like that. And I guess, uh, can I do this? Or do the, yes. So I guess we, like, the idea is that you have, like, a, some pending task. Uh, hello Xcode, what are you doing? Okay. And then, if I'm not mistaken, the common format is this. So, a task that is done already. So I guess that's that's what we will have. And eventually the goal is that you can do, so you can do run this and just say example md, and it runs it and it basically shows you a nice interface that you can navigate and see the to-dos, mark them as done and stuff like that, basically. And let me just copy this couple of things here too. So I already, you know, I already link them to my target. Uh, and this is something I always keep carrying over, copy pasting from one project to another. Because <laughs> I never remember the exact syntax for this. Uh, but yeah, so let's see if it runs. Now it should pro compile the dependencies because now they are actually linked. So that should work. Takes a little bit the first time, but now we should have like a proper workflow. I always like to, you know, set up the workflow first and then uh, start coding. So what are we going to be using for this? So for this stuff, we're going to be using end courses, right? Don't ask me many questions about this because I'm not an expert, but the idea is that this is kind of like a programming. It's library that to my surprise is already included in macOS. So that's like a benefit. It's written in C. So on this basically, uh, application that we're working, Swift is going to be interoperating with uh, C directly, right? We could use some higher level libraries. I think I have a couple that I found. I mean, uh, there is this one and this one, you know, which they are just wrappers on top of this, right? Uh, that make it, you know, like make make it more swifty. You have a screen which is a single tone and stuff like that, and this one. Uh, I think this one, you know, makes a terminal and stuff like that, right? But I don't like them. Like, I've looked at the Redmi's and first, I think this one doesn't even compile anymore, you know? It's it's kind of like one of the bad things about the Swift ecosystem that for this kind of like esoteric things, like as, if it's a Swift UI library, everybody's going to be maintaining it. But if it's kind of like these esoteric things, like there is not much people using it uh, and it's not very well maintained. And this one, I don't really like the... Thing. Like it's swifty, but not that very much. So, and it has some private things that you know, like this is an index. But sometimes, if you want to go down into the C interface to actually pass things around, you don't have the pointers that you need. So that means that instead of going through these libraries, I'm just gonna go directly to the C library, and we're gonna see how I don't know how it goes because you know, using C from Swift, it should work. You know, most of the things work, but as we already saw when we were working with Raylib, there is some things that, you know, don't really work. Like if 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 some macros are too complex, they, they are not exposed, you know. I would love they will just like make inline functions or something like that, but yeah. So basically the idea of this is that you set your basically terminal in a different mode so now it's like in a mode that you start typing and you press intro and that does something, right? Like that, that gets sent into ZSH and ZSH interprets that as a comment and it runs something and whatever, right? So the idea is that we set the terminal in another mode, which is kind of like row mode, and then everything you type, you can control exactly what it does. And that means that you can do, you like move like with a cursor and stuff like that, right? And it's up to you to, to define what it does and then you can draw you basically need to imagine that this is a grid and you can draw on every part of the grid manually like a character okay and that's how you get fancy things uh, like this so as far as I know yeah courses was like kind of like the 
the Unix or Linux or you know yeah BSD kind of like interface that this is and that's how like basically the first you know rogue games started and then Ncursor is basically like a like a more modern <laughs> iteration of this that works in modern systems so that's kind of everything I know about that so one thing you need to do in macOS is add this linker flag because otherwise since it's a system library the package manager doesn't even know where to find them so you, it's on the system already so you only need, only need to, do, to tell the linker to actually link with the, with the library so it's like a dynamic, a dynamic library that is going to be found at runtime and I think that's the setup and the preamble so we should be able to go here and basically import and we're going to start importing foundation just you know for completeness and then uh, let me make sure if I have the name right we need to import Darwin so Darwin is basically it's kind of like the subsystem that we have on macOS uh, foundation imports Darwin already so we have access to some things but for these things since it's like a, a, a system library you actually need to import it manually and it's called ncurses radio so this is compiling this is compiling so now uh, so again like for now we haven't done anything so if we just do this and run it uh, you know nothing happens but it's linking and it's it, that that part is working okay okay that's good so let's start I have some some notes here about some functions because otherwise I don't really know uh, the interface and you know trying to work with the C interface without knowing it exactly it's kind of like a little complicated but let's give it a try so first of all uh, one thing I've seen many people do is set this local which I, I guess it sets the locale of the terminal and if you don't do this I found that some like if you start using some unicode characters which we may use you know to indicate uh, some stuff on the on the on the on each task it doesn't work so for it to work there is this uh, there you go c type which I guess it's like local c type and, and as always you need to put it in basically English I mean American English like it's a similar thing when you are trying to decode things from a standard from dates and things like that <clears throat> you also need to put it in like in a POSIX in a POSIX standard and then we initialize the screen right and we can't forget that after everything we do like before the program uh, ends we need to end uh, the window basically because otherwise we may leave the, the terminal in a non-consistent state you know and then you start doing this and start like you start seeing weird stuff going on and, and it doesn't work so okay so we have this now so let's see if i run it uh, you won't see anything because you know we're just running and stopping but at least it seems that it's it stays in a consistent state so that's good that is good ladies and gentlemen so then i guess we can start basically by, by looking at at how we can just draw some stuff right so let's try to draw with the so for example let's do quit false and let's do a while no quit so we're gonna have basically like a render loop here and we're gonna try to to basically draw some lines on the screen uh, let's say uh, so this is usually move at string that's kind of like the API that we want and the move at string is like it prints a string but the first two parameters are where you are moving it and it's basically zero it's lines so basically it's like the y like you go vertically first and then the second one is the the column so then you go x so it's kind of like reversed of what you are used to uh, so first is y and then is x right so it's kind of weird and then here you need to pass an unsafe pointer to uh, to a c character but luckily for us swift does that for us so we can say a first task for example 
you know and so we can put this at zero zero and if we put uh, this at zero at one zero that should work and uh, it works yeah we like when you're working with C you'll have to start converting integers to specific uh, sized integers in 32 in 16 you know because that's how the APIs work and that doesn't happen automatically so you know we'll we have to get used to it so let's see what happens now uh, okay yeah of course it doesn't work I guess maybe it's because I don't have the color set up so let's say for now uh, who is it like use default colors and maybe that makes it work no it is weird because it's not resetting it's not resetting it hmm. so I also yeah like there is the no echo but that shouldn't do anything because that's it just so what you write it's not echoed and then I also want the the cursor set to zero so it basically makes uh, makes cursor invisible okay that does something but who the fuck knows Ah, yeah, because I'm not refreshing. That's the problem. That's the problem. I already made the mistake of, uh, you know, of a loop working with n cursors. Yeah, because this loop keeps going, so it just keeps going, right? And we keep drawing to the screen. But the way n cursors work is like there is, it's like a two-step process, right? It's everything you do. It's kind of kept in memory. Right, and then you need to manually tell refresh this, so, which it makes make puts all of that into the screen, right? So that makes it you know more performant, and you can if you just change, if in one loop you just change one specific character, and you, you can just render the character, and then there is more advanced things to make like windows and which they are just squares basically, but you can put windows here and just refresh the specific windows and stuff like that. So that's that's probably the problem I'm having here. So. Uh, what I will do is first erase the screen to get rid of any weird stuff that may be there. I don't think it's needed, but sometimes, you know, if you fuck up, you can get in a consistent state. And then after you have done everything, refresh. Okay, so now we should see something. And now we see first task, and I guess we can say second task. Uh, there you go. First task, second task. See, at row zero, so it's like we are at row zero, row one, row one, and we start at the beginning. Cool. So we already have something going, like we have full control of this. So if, for example, if we can put like, I don't know, 10 and 10, we are gonna draw it like in a different place. And as you can see, we're drawing first this line and it goes here, and then this line goes here. So it's not just that we're just printing and it goes one after the other. We're actually putting things in a specific places, uh, so that's cool. That's a start. That's a start, right? 